Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is my take on the U.S. election. We have the knight in shining armor versus the wicked witch of the West, and let's see how it's going to turn out. So, why will some women let alpha males grab them by the pussy? Later. First, other important stuff. I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, smartest man on earth, and how dare I say that? Well, I have a grade 17 in science and five years as the teaching assistant of Canada's only mathematics of gambling course. Remember Star Trek, Mr. Spock, science and odds? I have the same degree. So that's why I can claim I'm a lot sharper than most people you know. Now, if you remember the movie Rounders, which was about uh, Hold'em, and it's the iconic movie for poker, there was a scene at the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, under all the chandeliers where Matt Damon, the aspiring young pro, had gone to play. And he had a very great statement which said, we don't really play together, but when was the last time you saw one piranha eat another piranha? So, the Trump Taj Mahal was the epitome of class in the 90s and 2000s, which is why it was chosen for that movie. And... Just like every poker game in the country has got their guy they call the professor, who knows the odds, I just happen to be the professor at the Trump Taj Mahal. Now, some Trump stories I'm going to tell, personal experience. Um, one, how he saved his Trump Taj Mahal when he had his billion dollar year loss. Two, how I cost him a fortune. And three, how the great white shark and a piranha took some extra bites out of a tuna at the end of the movie. So, I'm an engineer, so I'm going to be brutally blunt. If you take offense, fine. I don't care. So, let's go into the Trump negatives that we've heard about. He takes a tax deduction like everyone else. If you're not willing to take your legal deductions, well, please, don't complain about another guy who's doing the same thing. So, when you see them complaining about stuff that everybody else is doing it and making a big issue about Trump doing it, then you know there's something crooked. And these people are crooked. So, um, how about the steel? When he went and got the uh, cheap steel to build this stuff. Well, guess what? If he didn't buy the cheapest steel he could get, and he could say to his shareholders, I decided to buy more expensive steel and cut back on your dividends because I got a good heart. He'd be fired. So everybody buys cheaper steel where they can get it. So again, they're blaming Trump for something he did that everyone else does too. More bent individuals when you see them complaining about that. So they complained about him not committing to the election. Well, come on, when was the last time there was any crookedness in a presidential election? Since Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Think about that. They're complaining he won't commit to accept an election after Hillary just cheated Sanders. So anyway, the people complaining about that bent again, working for an, another reason. Now, they call him racist, sexist, misogynist, all those ists are in the eyes of the beholder and don't necessarily have to be true. But they sure do heat up the anger and the hate. So much so that when they label them worse than a Hitler, well, you know, that's inviting some loony to go out there and shoot him, right? Because he'd be doing the world a favor to get rid of a new Hitler, wouldn't he? So that makes all the cheating in the voting booths, okay, because it's to stop Hitler. And it makes all the fraudulent polls saying that Hillary's winning, don't bother voting for Trump, to stop Hitler. You understand how not only vicious and dangerous that is, but it will inflame some nuts into doing all sorts of evil things because they're stopping Hitler. Even the Secret Service, three times they put Trump's life in jeopardy. Remember the Kennedy stand down when the Secret Service, they pulled off the guys off the cars? Well, guess what? What happened with Donald Trump when the protesters stopped his motorcade and he had to get out and climb over a barrier and go in the wrong way? Well, the guy shooting that video could have been shooting something else. 
as well. Two times his motorcade is stopped by protesters who could have had a strap on bomb. So the Secret Service has fallen down three times so far. So when you go out there and you invite every Hitler hater to take a shot at Trump, what are you going to do when they do take a shot at him? Say, oh, we really didn't mean it. You know, that, that was all hyperbole. Hey, you call someone Hitler, you're inviting someone to kill him. And you people are disgusting. So, and uh, now, the only thing I do, so many evil smear mouths out there that I started a Facebook page called Trump Twits, where I share every single cheap shot, good shot at him and also at Hillary. So I'll be able to go back and look over how this election progressed with the social media articles. Who were the bad guys? Who were the good guys? Who lied? Who didn't? And remember, so far, all of the bad stuff is happening on the Hillary front. Donald's running a clean game, right? But Hillary's people, cheating, lying, rioting, you know what I mean? What do you want? So Trump's running a clean game. Now, let's look at Trump's positives. Global warming's a hoax. 1998 was our last warmest year before 1936. So it's been like 80 years that it's been in decline. Now, they used a trick to hide the decline. That was discovered in the climate gate emails. And guess what? There are still politicians out there fooled by the trick to hide the decline. Now, you got Putin and you got Trump, the only two alpha male politicians on the planet. Well, me too, I guess. I'm in the Guinness Book of Records for running in more elections than anyone else in history. So we're all against global warming because it's a hoax. Now, they changed it from global warming to climate change. And now they can claim that no matter what happens, they were right. Now, not only is that a weak move, but it now opens them up to being the idiots who are trying to stop climate from changing. <laughs> it's really kind of funny, you know. They were going for global warming, and now when it stopped warming and it started cooling, they said, hmm, the only way to keep winning is to take credit for both ways. Climate change. Any climate change, and we're right and they're wrong. So that's the fun of it all. These clowns want to stop climate change, and all of the politician press prostitutes in the world are pushing the same thing. Even Justin Trudeau, this kid got into first year engineering before dropping out and he's still fooled. Didn't he learn thermometers in engineering? So anyway, now, he, uh, what's his name? Kerry. Kerry says, hey, he's pissed off that nobody talked about global warming during the election. Well, that's because Trump would beat her up with the global warming hoax. So um, now the best of all is I found that the easiest way to make fun of the warmistas, the alarmists, is simply say, I bet you a hundred bucks it'll be colder next year. And then everybody gets to watch them back down. I've been doing this on the internet for years. I go up to some alarmist who points this thing and I say, I bet you a hundred bucks it's going to be colder next year. And then when they back down, I laugh, har, 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 flash the cash, bye bye trash. So anyway, you're going to trust your government. So anyway, just remember now, the liars were the alarmists and the deniers were the exposers of the lies. So anyway, I'm a denier. I deny that humans are influencing the environment enough with CO2 to have any impact at all. So next, he doesn't want multiple vaccines for babies. Okay, think about that. Now, especially for stuff like mumps and measles, harmless diseases that we used to get when we were kids and it was a few days off school. Now you're going to add two more vaccines to the whole plethora of vaccines. Now, most people don't understand how combinatorics works. Do you really think when they're giving your kid 39 vaccines that they checked all of the two vaccine combinations to see if it could cause problems and the three combination vaccines and the four combinations you think they tested those and do you have any idea how many combinations it would take to test out of the world no way they can have tested combinations of vaccines so if you want to inject your kids with untested vaccines well that's okay the inferior are going to get bred out 
Now, you're going to trust your government? These are the guys who put mercury in your teeth, fluoride in your water, aspartame in your gum, glyphosate in your wheat, BPA, bisphenol acid, acrylamides, which is carbohydrates, uh, bo you know, overcooked too hot, so it turns into poison. But imagine now, aspartame, they've got it in all your kids' gum, except one, the gum that tastes like soap. This is the only gum without aspartame, just ordinary, not so dangerous sugar, a gram. But all your kids are sucking in aspartame. Same thing with bisphenol A. All of the receipts that they're using in the stores, they all got bisphenol A. And all these employees are sitting there handling these receipts all day and being poisoned. You watch, someday, when the link is coming out, these companies are going to be sued by the people they poisoned with these bisphenol A receipts. So, look at They've got all sorts. They've got corporate tobacco they allowed. They have altered wheat with the glyphosate. And these are the guys who banned marijuana that never killed anybody and is good for almost everything. Think about that. You trust your government that banned harmless and beneficial pot and you trust them when they put all these poisons in your food and your environment? Are you crazy? So, vaccine promoters and vax anti-vaccine bets are the pages I put on the internet where I can put all the people I want to be able to point at later who are promoting vaccines and all the people who are exposing the dangers so I can laud them later. Next positive point, 911. He wants to get to the bottom of who really did it. Now, first of all, you cannot believe how stupid you are going to look to your kids and your grandchildren when you're trying to explain to them how you believed after 911 that gasoline fuel could melt steel. And that's why you turned off your gas burners because you were worried about the grill starting to melt. Right? You got nice blue flame, the hottest flame possible in your gas burner. Your grill ain't melting. And yet they got this yellow flame at 911 and you believe it melts girders? How stupid can you be? Number two, jumbo jets can't fly 500 miles an hour at sea level through thick air like they do at 35,000 feet through thin air, just like you can't wade through water as fast as you can walk through air. Do you appreciate how stupid people who believe 911 can really be? That gasoline melts steel and jumbos can travel at 500 miles an hour at sea level? Anyway, there are so many other scientific incongruities in 911. It's a joke. It's laughable. But nevertheless, as long as the mainstream media keep pushing it, we've got a bourgeoisie who keep believing it. I mean, these people have been so dumbed down with their vaccinations and their fluoridations and their aspirin and their mer. They can believe this kind of stuff without realizing how stupid they look. But not the Donald. He knows gasoline can't melt steel. Okay, now, he also said, Bush lied us into the Iraq war. Well, I thought that put a bullseye on his back. Speaking that truth, he did. So, he said, we got the choice. We can cooperate against ISIS with Russia, China, Iran, Syria. Wow, he doesn't want to go and do regime change. He wants to get rid of the terrorists. Of course, we know Hillary and Obama financed the terrorists. And now they're getting these Syrian refugees out. And everybody's working so hard to claim them and bring them in, these poor Syrian refugees, with a whole bunch of U.S. trained mercenaries, terrorists, coming in with them. Did you notice? 800 guys who got into Germany all disappeared one time. Bam, gone. Guess what? That's a whole regiment ready to do dirty tricks for the Yankees all over Europe. And they're bringing them into Canada. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with real refugees. But you know they're bringing them. They're getting their mercs out of there. So that's why we got to. And here's Trump saying he's not going to want a war with Iran. Boy, that's going to make a lot of people mad. Now, people, everybody's mad about Iran getting their $1.4 billion. As if America's just giving it to them as a present. Can you believe that when they impose the sanctions on Iran... America grabbed all their money. And then, when the sanctions came off, 
without mentioning that it has grabbed money, people are complaining about giving it back. They want you to renege. They want you to keep the money that ain't yours. You didn't know that, did you? So anyway, what can I say? Trump is the peace candidate. Hillary is the war candidate. And he wants to audit the Fed. Now, that's a good start. But reprogramming the Fed with an already existing flawless system is the better answer. Now, if everybody could have an account at the Fed so that not only the bankers get quantitative easing, which is interest-free loans, but people can get interest-free loans too, what would happen? Well, you're a poor guy, you get an interest-free loan at the central bank, what are you going to do? You're going to pay off all your bank mortgages, pay off all your credit cards, pay off all your debts. And after that, you get one debt, one number, and every payment after that goes off the principal. Now, an unemployed guy gets an interest-free credit card. What does he do with it? Well, he'll probably go get himself a little condo, got to pay the depreciation, get himself a car, get some tools, get trained, and go to work, try and pay it back. So, who is more likely to understand that we should run the Fed like a casino bank, interest-free. Hillary or casino owner Trump? If you can convince Trump to run the Fed like he ran his Taj Mahal bank, interest-free, and give you interest-free loans of new chips, all your problems are over as well. If you give those interest-free credit cards to the refugees, Hey, maybe they're going to want to go home and repair and get going again. They don't want to live in your land. They like their land before you bombed it. So, now, remember 1995 when he had his billion dollar loss? Well, that's the years I was at the Taj, okay, from 94 until 2000. And I remember the talk about, you know, is the Taj going to shut down if, if Trump can't make his payments or whatever? Here's what I heard happened. I can't vouch for it, but boy, does it make sense. Seems that Trump found himself an angel who would lend him the money to stay afloat. But with all of the documentation and paperwork and complexities and declarations to the public about his corporation in trouble, he found a way around it. His angel just simply went and bought chips at the casino. And Don got to use the float to pay his debts. And as soon as he got back on his feet, the guy came and cashed in his chips. Now, you got to admit, <laughs> that was pretty smart, right? So anyway, and that's how I think Donald kept the Taj afloat in the years when I was making my living there. So if Donald could benefit from a taste of sociable credit, an interest-free loan to get him over the hump, imagine if he allowed me to reprogram the Fed's computer to give everybody that same safetying lifeline of interest-free credit too. So, now Clinton, the fun stuff, we'll go over her negatives first. Well, her health-wise, okay, her collapses, her surgeries in the brain, the cross eyes that she does all the time, and her bad memory. I mean, she forgot 39 times what she'd said when she testified with the MPI. Her memory is shot. And she's having delusions. Remember when she was in Bosnia and the little girl with the flowers, she had the delusion it was sniper fire? Imagine if Putin's bringing her a, you know, panda bear or something and she gets the delusion it's nukes and she's got her hand on the button? Hey, the lady with delusions about Bosnian snipers ain't the lady who should have her finger on the nukes, right? Oh, the lies about Benghazi. That was incredible. Anyway, and her perjuries to Congress. I mean, this is all so obvious that anybody who can defend them is a crook, okay? Think about that. She's lied so often, she's, anyway, that they're out there defending an avowed liar. Not only that, she put national security at risk. She couldn't care less. It was more convenient for her. Who cares where she put it? She didn't care. That's the kind of person she is. So... So, I remember cutting this out ah, 25 years ago when she first got into the White House in 92. And there's Hillary telling the carpet layers how to do their job. 
<laughs> what a... I can just imagine if I was the engineer sitting there saying, hey, bitch, here's the tape, you do it. Or better or not, sorry, lady, we got blueprints. We know what we're doing. But that's her. That's the kind of person she is. Telling pros how to do their job. That's called smartestmanonearth.ca slash hillarycarpet.jpg <laughs> from a long time ago. So, now, where am I? Oh, I didn't want that one. Ah, uh, okay, now the server. That's a great story. Remember, she keeps talking about, oh, I used the Gmail account. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, it was a mistake, and I'm really sorry. Hey, lady. Like Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice used accounts, email accounts too. Lady, the criticism is you using a server. They didn't use a server. Notice how every time they talk about the server, she pivots to her account. Hey, skilled liar. And, uh, and of course, Obama. Imagine him getting caught. He said he didn't know she was on a private server and he was sending her emails on it. The only question is, he's wanted executive immunity for his documents to her. Hey, if it said president from us.gov, sure. But if it said B. Obama from some other private source, maybe not. So anyway, uh, oh, when she said, oh, wipe the server with a cloth, and she jokes about Snapchat deletes the messages automatically. Oh, ladies bent. Now, call me. Comey is the crookedest cop in the history of the FBI. I mean, he didn't impanel a grand jury. So he couldn't get a subpoena to grab the computers. So he had to beg them and offer them immunity to get the computers because he didn't impanel a grand jury. See what he did? He gave them all immunity to all the crooks. Rather than get a subpoena. And why? He said, because I found it usually better to do it without coercion. Hey, that's what subpoenas and grand juries are for. Now, he also made the decision for the grand jury and for the Department of Justice. Notice that. Now, so no grand jury. They didn't even ask the NSA. Hey, you got everybody's emails. You got Hillary's. Hey, if a Romanian hacker and they say Russia did it, maybe China could do it. God, doesn't that make the NSA look incompetent? <laughs> no, they got it. And imagine, they've had it all along. And the FBI didn't ask to go get it. <clears throat> Notice the guy who handed out the immunities wasn't the FBI. It was an unnamed Department of Justice attorney. Okay, it wasn't Loretta Lynch. He pulled out. So some anonymous guy, he's the guy who did the dirty deeds of offering immunity to the crooks. And his name isn't out there yet. Hey, Trey Gowdy, Jay from Chaffetz, go get it. And finally, Congress has the right to impeach Hillary, even after she's gone. So why don't they? Okay? They don't need, they said, oh, we have to refer it to the FBI. No, you don't. Congress can write the indictment, which will be tried in the Senate. So why don't you write out the indictment? Pay for play. Wow. What did she sell that made her $200 million in so few years? <laughs> and it wasn't her pussy. <clears throat> the Veritas tapes. That's where her hillbullies are going out there and they're busting up things and intimidating people and causing riots and oh, all sorts of horrible stuff. Now, they say Veritas, he's a convicted criminal. But without telling you what he was convicted of, he was convicted of sneaking in somewhere to get a story. <laughs> so they now say he is discredited, but his story wasn't. And his story is not now. And if you consider having tried to sneak in to get a story as a criminal conviction record, it wasn't even a felony. Fe felony, it was a misdemeanor. So that is the very tough. But whenever you see them pivot off the true story onto the messenger, <laughs> then you know you're dealing with someone who knows they're lying. Isn't that neat? Robbie Mook.
and uh, especially when they go off onto the Russia story, you know, Russia did it, Russia did it. They got no proof Russia did it. 17 intelligence agencies say Russia did it. No, they don't because they got no proof Russia did it. Okay, none. They don't know who did it except the Romanian hacker who did it, who seems so much smarter than NSA, they got to put him in jail. So, <clears throat> now, you got to understand, that there's a certain kind of duping delight. Why would they, they call these hypothetical locker room chats in the Veritas tapes of all the crookedness in her campaign? Well, guess what? Crooks love to boast. They love to boast about the scams they pulled off. They're proud of them. Okay? And that's all you heard was boasting crooks. There's even something called duping delight. You can see someone lying to people and suddenly they get this little smile and that's the duping delight. They know they're lying and they're pulling it off and they're happy about it. Duping delight. Now, two great examples you can go see of duping delight. You got the Orlando shooter hoax. Now, when you don't see any ambulances, and you see cowboys carrying, you know, wounded people around, they're probably hoaxed. Let's take um, or Orlando. We're talking about the duping delight. In Orlando, you have these guys carrying the victim, not away from the, from the discotheque, but towards it. And then when they get out of the camera range, suddenly they put the guy down and another guy starts laughing. It's so funny, a real duping delight. Then there was the Ottawa Parliament Hill hoax with that terrorist. And during the video, you see these two cops running across the street trying to avoid being shot by possible terrorists. And as soon as they get behind the building and they think nobody's looking, they bust out laughing. Duping delight again. Understand what makes a hoax? When you see duping delight, they're lying to you. Now, there's many more. Let's take the Boston Marathon one. That's my favorite. The, now, you got a guy with his legs blown off. No ambulance, no medics. Now, what you're supposed to do to first aid is you put the guy's legs up so that they don't bleed out. What do these clowns do? They stick him on a, on a wheelchair and they race him down the street making sure he can bleed out as fast as he can. But when he gets down near the end, all of a sudden his phony prosthesis of the bone falls off. The guy picks it up and puts it back on before they wheel him out, okay? Wow, what a hoax. Sandy Hook, they took this decrepit old school full of mold that could never pass a test. And again, no ambulances, no medics. They didn't have anybody going in. Oh, all dead, don't bother, don't need anything, right? What else? Uh, another great, oh, and of course my all-time favorite, the Syrian drowned boy. You know, face down in the water. How horrible, wanted to get to freedom and he just didn't make it. And you can imagine the distraught father who couldn't get to his son to pull him out of the water, his face out of the water, and give him resuscitation because he was too busy looking around for a photographer to take a picture. You get it? They left the kid face down in the water so they could go out and get a picture of him. Nobody thought of resuscitating. You didn't see any, nothing at all. So, get what I'm saying? If a dad can leave his kid face down in the water, running around looking for a photographer, eh, strikes me something fishy there. So, now, just like with Syria right now, the U.S. finishes five years of bombing the Middle East, 515, and they're going to be doing Mosul next. And the Russians, boom, they attack some terrorists in Aleppo, and suddenly, all of a sudden, there's an Aleppo boy, and all the people worried about the Aleppo civilians. You know, my God, it makes you want to puke. As a matter of fact, every time when we, they had these returns on the back with how people were feeling during the debate, and when Hillary pivoted off of no borders and everybody can come in onto Russia did the email, said Russia supports WikiLeaks, you could see her numbers just go down. They're puked out with the story about Russia did it, pivoting to the messenger every time they can. So... Now, Hillary positives. Okay, she's got no dick, okay? She ain't a man. That's the only positive she's got. So, and she'll get the, she'll get the no dick and the femboy vote for sure. 
Now, oh, okay. She's got experience of killing people and ordering wars and stuff like that. Uh, she's probably killed more people than any other woman in history. Think about that. I mean, there have been bad witches in the past, but they can only kill a few hundred at a time. Hillary's done millions. Think about that. The Wicked Witch of the West with the greatest number of deaths at her doorstep, and they want to make her president, see if she can do better. God. Anyway, so no, she's got lots of experience at killing. Oh, she's got the total support of the dead voters and the illegal aliens. Okay, give her that. That's a plus for her. And of course, her hillbillies, they have experience at stealing elections, ballot stuffing, stealing ballots even, you know, rioting. I mean, the poor Donald, he's, he doesn't have any political experience. What does he know about rigging elections? And finally, again, I'm worried about the Secret Service putting Trump in danger. <laughs> okay, now we go on to the one everybody wants to know about, the sexy 70s. The sexy 70s, when women just got birth control, the pill, and there was no VD. Now, this was a generation of alpha ladies. Confident, independent, had jobs, and as randy as the guys. Okay? And they weren't weak sisters suffering from hurtful words, PC offense like today. No, 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 no. These were independent, powerful women in our day. And so now you're saying, wow, alpha males go for triples like Donald? Well, I never tried a triple, but here's the cartoon from those days. And you can see that in, in the old days, in my day, first base, we called that cop in a field. And at second base, we call that fondling the tits. And third base, we call that tickling her pussy. And then fourth base was mutual satisfaction, home run. That was our generation. I mean, we'd go out to the discos. We'd possibly come out with a different girl once a month. And if not, one of the old regulars you've been dating for the last few years. You understand there was no jealousy, there was no guilt, there was no insecurity. It was just, you go out there, who's the prettiest one you can go home with tonight? Your home or her home? Pretty tough these days when you got to go to the parents' basement and the shower's on the third floor beside Dada's bedroom, right? So you ain't got much. You cannot imagine what the world was like in the sexy 70s. So, but you look at these man pussies like, Geraldo and Mayer, and they're all offended, you know, that an alpha male would start at third base. Well, no, notice the operative word here is when he said, they'll let you. Now, okay, Geraldo and Mahar, they didn't let them, probably, okay, uh, small dicks, whatever. But who knows where an alpha male starts? If the Donald could start on third base, because he ain't got much time, well, of course, the yes is in the eyes, but he probably has a lot more yes in the eyes than the average guy, right? Women must be throwing at themselves at him all the time. And, of course, hey, if you can start on third base without checking out second and first to later, more power to you. In the old days, now, with these uptight, you know, uh, politically correct, oh, he assaulted me. Hey, yo, they'll let you is not assault. They'll let you is not predation. Well, actually, that makes me a predator. Unwanted advances. Hey, every time a girl wouldn't dance with me, she can now accuse me of having made an unwanted advance, right? Every rejection comes out of the woodwork at Donald right now. That's all it is. So, of course, think about it. That's really all they got against the Donald is they want to focus on his dick. Nothing else. He's... He's got a clean record. He's done nothing improper. He's got a good business. He's been an honest man. He's been a fighter. And of course, they say he's been sued 4,000 times. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 2,000, he sued them. Oh, slight distortion. Only 50% off. So anyway, and the last latest one was the porn star who says he grabbed me by the arm. <laughs> Imagine. This is the news. So, forget Trump's dick and those who focus on it, okay? It ain't important. <clears throat> now, the media. WikiLeaks gets 57 seconds on the same day that Donald's dick got 23 minutes. Think about that. 
the stories on Donald's dick got 23 minutes prime time news, and the WikiLeaks exposure on Hillary's corruption got t under a minute. Now, people are learning that the media is controlled, that the media is fixed. They've learned that in this election like they've never known before. And we're really facing the Wicked Witch of the West versus a knight in shining armor here. And it's just, there's so much shit dumped on the Donalds, you don't see the shining armor. And almost nothing dumped on Hillary, you know, the Wicked Witch. So just remember, the bourgeoisie, they don't get the chance to go online and find the truth. They work 12, 15 hours a day trying to make their bills. They get home. They're about to go to bed. They turn on the TV and watch the news while they eat. And all they get is Big Brother. Sad. So just remember, the bourgeoisie are a big, big number who are completely oblivious to the background truth of what's going on. Now, why the polls are so fixed. You have Donald Trump's rallies with 30,000 people. And then you got Tim Kaine, who draws a massive 30, massive, a thousand-fold difference. Tim Kaine, 30, and Donald Trump, 30,000, and Hillary Lowell little ones, too. And yet they keep saying they're even in, the, even in the polls, even in the polls. Why? Two reasons. The gambler vote. Would you believe there are people so dumbed down that they think it's a horse race and they're trying to pick the winner? They look around, see who's got the most signs, and then they vote for the winner. And if he wins, they go, I, I, I voted for the winner. I'm a winner. Imagine that. I call that the gambler vote. And number two, if they can make it sound all along and never stop saying that it's close, when they steal it, what are you going to say? They're just going to say, see, we were right. So that's why the media keep hyping the phony polls. Now, what could Trump do that could really change stuff? Well, they say a sea of red, meaning everybody wearing red, not blue, leave the blue signs at home, red to the polls, because exit polls aren't going to be enough to complain with, okay? People are just going to say, ah, who knows who took them, who knows what was really said, but if you have a sea of red, it would be harder, but it won't matter. They're going to do it anyway, because there's nothing you can do about it, okay? It doesn't matter... If they don't see one Clinton voter there, when the machines say she wins and there's no paper trail, what are you going to say? You got nothing you can do. When they steal it, you're stuck. There's just nothing you can do. Now, number two, you can really make it big. I would, if I was Donald Trump, I'd put a bounty on the emails. Okay? I'd say I'm going to give anybody posts all of Hillary Clinton's 33,000 emails $10 million, including the NSA, if you want the 10 mil. So, now that would be a massive story about, and it would reinforce the fact she deleted them all after the subpoena, put out a bounty on her emails and see what happens. Maybe the Russians will claim it. Maybe the Chinese. Maybe Goose for three. <laughs> Next, I would get people to file complaints with the Chicago District Attorney. Okay? And I would complain about Congress not impeaching Hillary and not impeaching Comey. Okay? Finally, number four. This is my favorite. Jill Stein has come out and said that Donald's not as dangerous as Hillary, which is a left-handed compliment but about as nice as you can get from a political opponent. The attacks are, he's unreasonable, he's dangerous, da 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 scare them, scare them, scare them. And she stood up to that and said, no, he doesn't scare me. She scares me. So, Jill Stein has gone and helped the Donald. And can you imagine the impact if the Donald just announced, I'm going to offer Jill Stein head of the Environmental Protection Agency. Every greenie in the country would vote for him. A bunch of Bernie people would suddenly vote for him. She is the one taking his votes, and she won't even mind giving them back, giving the nice thing she said, if you're offering to give her and her people a chance to take a look at the environment. Donald, what a gesture of good faith, and you'd get all the green 
minded and fond people. Finally, I would offer to make Facebook, Twitter, and Google public utilities. Start a new Google as a public utility. Start a new Twitter, a new Facebook as a public utility so that if somebody censors something, we have recourse to the courts. But right now we don't. These are private organizations, probably financed by the CIA, to run these public utilities called private so they can play with them anytime they want. So, Donald, we need a public utility, Facebook, Twitter, and Google, and it'll be easy to do. And you get all those people who want honesty and are sick of censorship. So, last points. <coughs> Oh, I didn't tell you about Donald Trump. I'll get to that later. All violence is from the Clinton side. Trump is completely clean. It's the people's peace choice against the media's war choice. And so, these ladies who want to send their babies to war because the peace nick because of the peace nick's lewdness. Geez, I hope your kids get the first funerals. But remember. There is nothing doable if they pull off a fraud. And they will. So I'm worried about that. So now, last two Taj stories. And around 1997 and 1998, uh, no smoking ban came in. We used to have a session fee where we paid $5 to play 10.20 per half hour, 10 an hour. We paid $12 to pay 15.30. We paid $14 to play 20.40. We paid $9, $18 to play 50.00. Okay, these were session fees, but because of the no smoking ban, the smokers wanted to run outside, but they didn't want to be paying for their empty seat while they're gone. So they convinced management to change from a session fee, which is 10 an hour, say, from 10 guys, 100 an hour off the table to the house, fine. They wanted to change to a rake off, $5 every pot. Now, I've done an analysis. And that would take $160 off the table per hour. An extra six an hour. Five bucks per pot times almost 40 pots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe it or not. 60 extra. Well, I didn't like that. But when it goes down one guy outside, now the game's a little faster. A few more rake-offs, but there's only nine guys eating it. So it's now costing us 18 an hour. And when the second guy goes outside, it's now a little faster, a few more pots, and it's eight guys eating the whole rake, and now it's 20 an hour instead of 10. And if three guys ever go outside, well, now it's 25 bucks an hour, and that's when most games break. So, I was complaining about that. I kind of complained to Tommy, his room manager, and he said, well, listen, convince me the majority want it, and I'll go back to the session fee. So I went home, I wrote up a petition, and I was explaining the difference in monies and everything. And I got 140 gamblers to sign it on a weekend. And then I handed it in to Tommy. Now, you got to understand, 60 an hour extra on top of 100 is like 60% greater profit they would have been making. Of course, the game might have died. But still, their books would have been showing more money already. And here I am trying to say, give up the more money and go back to the old way. So I handed in the petition. And they put it back to the session fee. I cost the Donald half a million per table that goes 24 hours around per year. And that's like, well, he had a lot of tables. So literally, I cost him millions, millions in extra rake off with that small petition which his staff honored. Now, Guess what? When you don't have a rake off, your game doesn't die. You can guys can go there and they can play forever at this ten dollars an hour happily without really going bust fast. Plus, the guys who are making two dollars would then be losers. The guys who are making four an hour would be losers. The guys who are making six an hour would be losers. And the guys who are making eight are now making two. So it would have busted his game, like many other rate games get busted. So, even though I made Donald lose millions in rake-off, 
I think I saved this poker room. And I made it the best poker room in the whole country, which is why it was picked as the iconic poker room for the Rounders movie. Anyway, that shows integrity when they gave up that kind of money because the gamblers wanted it, right? And last but not least, I was gonna tell you how, you know, the statement about, well, listen, we don't play together, but when was the last time one piranha ate another piranha? Well, here's a story. It was me, the great white shark. I had the highest win rate in the world. And a young Asian piranha. And we're gonna get two big extra bites out of a tourist tuna. Okay, for those who don't know poker, you can quit now. Um, at the end of the f turn, there's 10 Jack, Queen, King on board. I got an ace. I bet. This guy raises. He must have an ace too. This guy calls. I raise again. He raises again. This guy calls. Well, this guy has to have three of a kind, which gives him 10 winning cards to win. Pretty good. He can't fold. He, if he has any pair or is four of a kind, he wins. 10 winning cards. In the meantime, me and the straight are praying no pair comes up because we know what he's got. Now, bam, no pair comes up on the last card. Now, I know if I bet and this guy raises, this guy's going to fold to a double bet. He's not stupid. He knows one of us has the ace. So I checked the young Asian bet. Now he's saying to himself, oh, the old guy doesn't have any, uh, doesn't have the straight. I only have to beat him, and if he don't have it, I win. So he called the next 30 bucks. Then I pump it. Now, if this guy raises, he's facing two bets. The tuna's going to fall. But the young Asian guy now just calls. And the tuna's thinking, wow, he might have it, but he may not have it anymore. I only got to put in one more bet to find out if my three kings wins. So he called. Boom. I had an ace. He had an ace. We each made an extra 30 bucks on a split pot simply because we understood the situation and he didn't. And we played it perfectly and he didn't. And he didn't see what we were doing. We weren't cheating. I just knew that if I face him with a double bet, he's gone. So I have to go the other strategy. And the other guy at his turn says, if I hit him with a double bet, he's gone. So I'm just going to call. And sure enough, we each made an extra 30 bucks. And that is how players can play together without cheating, just by both being in tune with reality, while the tuna have no clue. So, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, great Canadian gambler, Taj professor, and that's my take on the U.S. election and why we're facing a crossroads in history. I mean, we're looking at World War III coming, Obama's trying to get a war started before the election. He's been trying real hard. And uh, Hillary for sure is going to start a war. It'll keep her in forever. And uh, only the Donald is willing to make peace and try and end it all. And by the way, if he does end up winning and allying with Putin, I would bet ISIS prefer to give up. Wouldn't you? So that's it. Thank you very much.